This podcast is being recorded and produced on Gadigal land. We pay our respects to the traditional custodians of this country and elders past, present. We extend our respect to any First Nations, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us today. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. We're eating cheesecake once again today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's not often a record we have here that we don't have a cheesecake lately <laughs> or something. We've got Pizza. dominoes, we've got cheesecakes. We've got a little birthday cake because obviously it was my birthday early this week or last week now, but it was my birthday party on the weekend. Mm-hmm. And I thought in this Close Friends episode we could talk all about it because I love talking about myself and I love stretching out my birthday for as long as possible. This week, by the way, you would have seen, if you haven't, on my Instagram and my TikTok, I've been putting up all the content. I'm going to have a little highlight on my Instagram profile if you want to go and look at that. And then I've been doing reels all week of like, you know, the house that we stayed at and the the actual event itself and all the table decor and all the rest of that. And um, let me say, because, you know, early this year we spoke in a Close Friends episode, I think about this year I just wanted quiet celebrating. I didn't want the big bash with you know, originally we were going to do the whole rooftop party thing, invite 200 people, make it this whole show and have a big bash. And I just, first of all, it was going to be way too expensive. I thought it was absolutely ridiculous. I thought it wasn't going to be that much. And then when I did the math and actually looked into it, it was going to be like $30,000. And I went, what? That's a stupid. I can't afford to do That's that. That's a wedding. That's a wedding. And... I decided instead that the vibe at the moment for me, which is very unlike me, but the vibe is quiet, quiet time, quiet time. I just feel life's so busy. I just wanted to have a nice little quiet, you know, max 30 people, which there were 30 of us all up. Um, I hired a a venue down in Kangaroo Valley. It was called Saddle Ridge. It was absolutely beautiful. You can just type Saddle Ridge into Google and it'll come up. Um... Hosted the event, luncheon there, had a three-course meal, had that catered. Yeah, that was really yum, oh, by the way. The, it was delicious, and I was so happy with the service and everything. They brought a bartender and a waiter and a waitress and obviously had the chef there, Brooke, as well. So it was dine-in by Brooke Silk, um, which was recommended to me by the venue that I booked. Mm. Um, and I'm just so glad... I'm just so happy with how everything went. Like, you know, given my life, Brittany, and how chaotic it is, I expected so many things to go wrong. I just thought in my heart of hearts that it would be pissing down rain all day. It wasn't. Mm, You could not have asked for a better day. You know what? The weather was so good. My um, middle part is red raw. Yeah, I know. The sun was a little too hot. We did have to uh, get some of the pool umbrellas. Yeah, we brought them out, but it was too late. My fucking scalp is red raw. And now it's going (laughs) to, you know what it's going to do? It's going to peel and then it's going to look like I have the world's worst dandruff. (laughs) But it's my peeling scalp. I just had my head down and Ellie's in the studio and she goes, is your scalp burnt? Yeah. It's fucking singed. I know. My bald patch is uh, (laughs) is, uh, red raw as well. So I'm with you on that one. But yeah, fabulous time. I I couldn't be happier. Um, Sorry, I'm just laughing at you because we were dressed up for our main episode as one another and Matt still has wing liner and like massive lips, but normal (laughs) clothes. (laughs) <laughs> it's giving tragic. Yeah, it's awful. And we don't even have a makeup wipe, so we'll be driving home like this in the in the elevator in my apartment. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Welcome. Come on in. Yeah. What level are you? I'll press the button for you. Um Anyway, yeah, I just thought like a million things would go wrong given me and my life and um that's fine. I'm very I'm very happy to adapt when things go wrong in my life. I'm very um resilient and I also think everything is content and everything for the plot. You know what I mean? If things go wrong, god, it's going to be a good story. You know yeah. what I mean? But I'm I'm sad to report but I'm also thrilled that literally this was just like the most perfect day ever mm-hmm. and that not a thing went wrong, not which a is thing. crazy. Um, the weather was perfect. The vibes were perfect. Everyone was in the best mood. Everyone just mingled with Everyone each other as well. Everyone was getting along, well. chatting, having a good time. It was like we were one big friend group and there were so many people from so dif- so many different parts of my life mm-hmm. that have never ma- uh, meshed together. Your school friends. You've never like met any, you've never crossed paths in my life. Yeah. No. I had school friends. I obviously had Your family. family. I had friends from, um, the gym and dance class and I had friends from, um, Social media, obviously. I had friends from, I had, uh, you know, different parts of my family. 
there. Oh, it was it was great. It was great. Everyone really gelled well together and um, the vibes just from the get-go. I mean, the property was so stunning that as mm-hmm. soon as everybody got in, they were just like, oh my God, what the heck is this? And straight away, they, everyone was just in a good mood. And I was like, yes, darling. Hello. Mm-hmm. Welcome. There was kangaroos hopping by. Yeah. There was no leopards. No, no leopards. No, no leopards ba- and no baby monkeys. monkeys no. If you know, you know. Um, but yeah. Did you have a good time? I had the best time. Mm. It was just vibey, like mm. just the perfect event. Mm. And I think the weather really, you know, when it's just like a fucking beautiful day, mm-hmm. like nothing makes me happier than when the weather is good. I've realized this lately. My mood is really dependent on the weather. If it is a gloomy, yucky day, I feel like your day just isn't the same. Yeah. But like the venue that we were at, the sun was fucking shining. There's only a couple little clouds that went by every now and then. Then we had the music going, the table set up in the middle of nowhere. And it was stunning. It was just like you couldn't have a bad day there. I know. And everyone was just chitter chattering, mingling. The food was fucking yum. Yeah. Yeah. And there was no seafood. No seafood. No, no, no. Um, yeah, some of our scrollers in the broadcast channel were like, where's the seafood? Because Brittany posted a photo of the menu in the broadcast channel and everyone was like, where's the seafood? First of all, hate seafood. Also, one of my friends who was there does have a very high uh, allergy to seafood. Right. So, Fair. Um, I mean, I obviously would have just, if I wanted seafood, made sure that she got the correct thing. But I was just like, I hate seafood anyway, so it's just easier to not have any. And especially on a hot day like that, I think the time and place for seafood, we were in Kangaroo Valley. We're nowhere near the sea. We're nowhere near the ocean. We're out in the bush, babe. I can't imagine having salmon sashimi in the fucking bush. Nothing worse to me Mm, than that. Um, It just didn't fit the vibe. We had kangaroo on as the entree. What entree did you get? The the goat's cheese panna cotta? Yeah, the the goat's cheese panna cotta. But I tried a little bit of the kangaroo as well, which felt a little bit bad, like felt a bit wrong because there was kangaroos jumping. Well, I knew we were in Kangaroo Valley. So when I obviously got the menu, so how it worked with the, um, the chef was... She just sends through, this is my menu, and there were, like, six options for each thing. And then I just picked two to do alternating. And I picked the kangaroo because we're in Kangaroo Valley, and I thought, that's really fun. Then when we got to the property, there were about 15 kangaroos that actually are on the property. And that was their fucking brother. And I, I know it because I saw there was one missing. I was like, ooh, it's a little too on the nose for me. You know, originally I was like, this is camp. We're in Kangaroo Valley. The entree can be kangaroo. That makes sense. That's so fun. And then when I got there and they're actually kangaroos bounding by while people are trying to eat their kangaroo. See, this is just what makes Ugh. me question like who I am as a person, right? So if you've listened to this week's main episode, I cried over a photo of a leopard mm. and a monkey. Mm. And I felt bad in that instance, but then I ate kangaroo on the weekend. So mm. where do I draw the fucking line of what I feel bad for and what I don't? And what main did you have? I had the steak. Nice. How was that? Because I didn't actually get a chance to eat the steak. Really I had good. the chicken, which really was, which I wanted. I told them. I said, can you just make sure? I was- swapped with um, Star. Oh, okay, nice. I gave her my chicken. I'm a red meat girl. Okay, nice. See, but like, why don't... You know, I cried over a photo of a baby monkey and mm. then I eat steak. Like, make it make fucking sense. <laughs> And then for dessert, we obviously had sticky date pudding, which was fabulous. But there was no ice cream. Yeah, but that's my fault because I actually didn't specify that. So that dessert, Brooke was like, oh, you can, uh, here's my dessert options or I can just do whatever you'd like. And all I said was, can you just do your sticky take on date. a sticky date pudding? I didn't clarify I wanted ice cream and cream, but it still worked. Oh, it was it? delicious. I yeah. put that in the broadcast too. And little, everyone was going, where's the ice cream? I know, the ice cream would have been a great little addition, especially given the day. Yeah. Um, but it didn't need it. No, it was, it was fucking yum. Yeah. And then um, the vibes were good. The first hour, we just had exclusively Speak Now and Fearless from Taylor Swift. The second two hours, we had all of my favourite songs, but the acoustic version. So that the, the first hour was Arrivals. The, the next two hours was the sit-down lunch. We had a playlist full of all my favourite songs, um, you know, like Only Girl in the World, but the acoustic guitar version. Which I was really pleased about because when Kate and I were driving, we were talking about um, what songs do we think Matt's going to play? Mm. And I was saying, I hope it's going to be like chill vibes, like acoustic mm. or even like Italian 
hinterland, I don't know, vibes. Mm. But then we're like, nah, it's probably just going to be Kylie and Lady Gaga. <laughs> but then we got there and it was, but it was acoustic version. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, you you hit the nail on the head. So spinning around was playing Dancing Queen, obviously, but all the acoustic versions. That was such a nice vibe. Loved that. Um, except the sun was so hot, my phone was overheating and the music was. the music kept stopped playing. And I was like, bloody hell. So we had to, ru- we had to get out the pool umbrellas. Some of the big strong men in the family went over and got the pool umbrellas and brought those over. And then everyone, I think, was content once that had happened. Um, and then for the last hour, it was like party songs. And then that's when I was in the pool. Everyone mm-hmm. started leaving. People were people were leaving, things like that. And then I got in the pool. I opened some of my presents. Which yeah, we was did so like a funny. freaking baby shower present opening. I know at it was one a bit point. awkward. I find opening presents at a party a little bit tacky. Like yeah. I didn't want to do that, but then so many people were, gave me just such perfect gifts that everyone was kind of like, "I want to see your reaction to yeah. my gift." I would have opened them later on in the night, away from everyone. Um, but you know, so many people. Like for example, you and Kate got me some things for my bookshelf, some books, and then a little press. For to press into my books that says like the library of all right hey mm-hmm. which was just my reaction to opening that was so fabulous and then the funniest part is two other people my cousin and also my best friend also got me the exact same thing yeah so now i've got three so i'll have to do some sort of rating system with my books when i stamp mm-hmm. them because they're all different at least yeah and then um my friend simi got me the most gorgeous when i opened the box and it said camilla on it i was like oh my gosh what the heck and it was this gorgeous camilla towel um and then obviously i was gifted the smell Smeg kettle and the Smeg toaster and oh I just got spoiled like I really like everyone went above and beyond with their gifts it was all really thoughtful and so I enjoyed opening them in front of people and letting them see my reaction but usually I wouldn't do that but it was funny it was like everyone just gathered around in a circle and there I was on this concrete slab in the middle of the bush just opening, gifts. opening all these gifts and uh, of course I got the Olivia Jean coin purse as well nice that was you nice you did you did um, yeah it was just it was it was great it was gorgeous um, I a got, very wholesome 30th I got plenty of, a, lot, a lot more presents and um, I didn't expect that because obviously I you know, p- coming down to Kangaroo Valley, which is about two hours south of Sydney for anyone who doesn't know. And it's not an easy drive. I, w- w- the you reason- come down the fucking side of this huge mountain uh, cliff. I'm getting motion sick and my ears are blocked. I like know. that's how steep and windy this fucking mountain was. <laughs> mm. But it was worth it. It was a nice view. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I've just eaten some cheesecake. I know. I just scoffed my whole piece down. Now I feel sick. Like it's sitting in my chest like I need to vomit. You know what we're having after this? Pies, baby pies. Oh, yeah, what actually, else? I could do with a pie. Actually, Ellie, go, 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 come on in. As an outsider, I know you haven't seen lot, a lot of the content from this week yet. It's all going to be posted this week, and then by the time this episode comes out, everyone would have seen it. But as someone who, sorry, wasn't at the birthday party. <laughs> Offensive. <laughs> what, what questions do you have? I want to know the most famous person that was there, probably. Like who were the cele- who are the names that I'd know? That the names there? I need to drop. Well, Brittany, yeah. Tanya yeah. Hennessy, Tanya yeah. Hennessy, uh, Kate, Dedicated Lifestyle. We had Olivia White. We had Lockie McIntyre, and we had Star. And was that they were all the famous people? I think pretty much. And my yeah. dad. My dad's quite famous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your dad was cute. He did a really nice speech. I know. Wasn't it gorgeous? Yeah. Um. And then I have a question for you, Britt. Because did you share a room with someone the night before? I know. So I stayed with Kate. So we had this whole fucking debacle of like how, what our travel plans were going to be because Kangaroo Valley was three and a half hours for her and it's like four hours from me. But I came to Sydney in between. So there was this whole thing like what are we going to do? Where are we going to stay? So we went and stayed in Kangaroo Valley on the Friday night. But we had a two-bedroom place. Why? I thought you were like sharing a room with someone and I was like, God, that's so – how could you do that? What, you couldn't share a room with someone? I don't know, Matt. Like, would you share a room with a friend now? Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I would if I you're had to. You're a mum, though, so when yeah. you get away, you're like, you're I like, need my yeah, own space. So whereas true. I'm like, no, let's, let's have no, a slumber No, so party. Kate and I stayed in a two-bedroom place, but um, for hours in the night, 
like I was in the room with two single beds and she just like, she's like, can we hang out together? Mm. And so we were just hanging out laughing in bed. It was actually really good that we did that because when we haven't seen each other for a while because everyone's just fucking busy. And so that night, Matt, like I got to Kangaroo Valley before Kate and I went to Coles before and got like all the stuff for the platter. I made a platter. Kate got there like an hour after me and we sat in the little lounge room of this thing and we didn't look at our phone for like two hours and we just talked. Nice. And it was like so good for both of us. Yeah. We just did like a big catch up. We vented about our life issues, our family problems. It was just fucking great vibes yeah. for us. And that's actually what I liked about the area as well is there wasn't any reception and there was uh, there was Wi-Fi at the house, but obviously I didn't give that to every guest that came for the mm-hmm. luncheon. But um, we didn't. If, we weren't on our phones no, throughout we were, the day. We weren't on our phones all day. You know, we made that fun little. Um, TikTok Domingo. reel thing, the Domingo mm-hmm. reel, and um, like that was fun. It took us five seconds. It was literally a one take. That was wonder, our first was take, and that was the winner. And um, yeah, there was just like no reception or anything, so no one was on their phones. I feel no one got bored the whole time, which is a hard thing as well. The only thing I will say is I feel I didn't um spend enough time. Like I, I feel even with you, Brit. I mean, you stayed after the celebrations were done. You hung around for a couple hours. I got to spend some time with you then, but I just don't feel like I spent enough time with you, Kate, Star, Lockie. Like I didn't get a chance to really like, do you feel like I spent in the actual time of- No, I didn't see you all day. Yeah, I know. Even like, like, yeah. But that's all right. You're so being many a people. Host. I'm like, oh my god, I feel like I didn't even speak to them. But you're very being the much. host. I know. I was trying to mingle with everyone, but it's just one of those things, isn't it? When you throw a party like that, you just can't get around mm-hmm. to everyone and give everyone the time of day. But I tried my best. Have you had anybody message you offended that they weren't invited? Because, no. Oh, that's good. No, but I think I in only invited the people who. Should be there. I mean, there's a, a few other friends who I'm like, oh, maybe I could have invited them. But if they weren't there, we're not we're that, not close friends yeah. in my eyes. Sorry if you think we're besties, but clearly we're not. Because I, I meticulously went through that list a hundred times. The seating plan was the most stressful thing in the world. Oh, there were a few people who I invited who couldn't come, though. Sorry. So, there, so I, I mean, I don't want to say that about everyone, but... um. There were a few people who I invited who didn't come, but also if you didn't come and make the effort, well, are we even friends anymore anyway? I don't know. You be the judge. <laughs> I'm so petty, you know. All I ask, I just, I just ask one, one thing, and a few people as well who said they couldn't come. I feel I've gone above and beyond for them in in my friendship, and they just didn't give me a good enough excuse. I'm, I'm, I'm okay if you've got an excuse. If you've got a wedding on or something like that, like two of my friends, Jess and Andy, they had weddings. Mm, totally get it. Fair. Of course, that's already locked in. I'm not offended. You don't have to come and please don't feel bad for not coming. It's not them. But there are other people who just like were like, nah, sorry. And then, you know, I see what they did on the weekend and I'm like, oh, so that's what you didn't come to my birthday for. No worries. And Ho- hope you had fun. Never speak to you again. Because <laughs> hey. I'm petty like that. I'm sorry. I put a lot of effort into my friendship. But I th- I feel like that's you sometimes, Matt. Like I think you go above and beyond. You know, for people that maybe wouldn't do oh, the same right. for you. Oh, right. Okay. You're saying maybe I do too much for people that yeah, wouldn't that's give what it, I'm but saying. I'm, I'm blind to yes, it. Yes, that's what yeah, I'm well, saying. I agree. I, yeah. have, I feel like I have been like that my whole life. And it's it's either that, it's either I go above and beyond for people who don't do the same to me, or I go above and beyond and they don't see it as above and beyond. Mm. Like, I feel like I've got, I, I do like so much. And I'm like, fuck, I'm a really fucking good friend. But to them, it's like the bare minimum. You know what I mean? So it's funny how that works, isn't it? But anyway, everyone who was there, I absolutely love and adore. And I um, was very happy that everyone took the time to come out. And I just, you know, I I made my little speech and I... You made three speeches. I did. I kept forgetting things because (laughs) because I... I, uh, What the problem was, I had just written down dot points on my notes app, but because of the sun, I couldn't fucking see my phone screen. So I've stood up to give my speech and I've looked down at my phone and the sun's so bright that I can't see what I've written down. So I kept forgetting. I had people to thank and I forgot to thank them in the first speech. So I had to make a second speech to thank them. And the third speech was just to thank the the chef and the staff. Yeah. I think I got a mention or two, which I was really... Stoked about as well because I mentioned I was mentioning. So for anyone who wants to know what happened in my speech, I'll let you know. I you know set all my achievements in the past uh, couple years leading up to thirty because I do feel like 
Um, you know, for me, age and getting older, I really don't care about it. Like, the only thing I've noticed is that, like, my body is definitely getting older. Like, I'm like, fuck it hell, I'm geriatric, love. But my attitude is not geriatric at all. Like, my attitude is like, life is only just really beginning. I kind of look at my 28 and 29 years, as in, like, w- while I was 28 and 29, I did more things in those two years than I think my entire 27 years before that. You know what I mean? And I'm like, it really is only just kind of like starting and I'm only just doing all of these fabulous things. And yes, your mention was that we won People's Choice Award for the podcast. Mm. That was the mention you got. Um, I spoke about my protein water collab with Muscle Nation. You know, I've been doing this for how long? That's the first kind of product collab that I've ever done. All these things I just like have only just starting to do and and that makes me feel good. So the premise of my speech is I just want to let everyone know that I'm very genuinely happy with my life and like the direction my life is going and the people who are surrounding me. And I also wanted to thank everybody, not only for traveling, but it was really nice because for the people who were there, the response from every single person who was there was like, when I invited them, they were like, of course, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Like, of course I'll be there. Like, of course, like, like it wasn't a question to them that they wouldn't be at my birthday. And that honestly really surprised me because I f- do feel in my life, I've had a lot of really lackluster friendships mm-hmm. that I've just let go on too long. And I've always been second, third, fourth priority to these people. And so for people to just go, oh my God, of course, I've already booked the accommodation. Yeah, I'll sort this out. Yep, got the babysitter. Yep, 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 done, done, done. I was like, oh my God, wow, like these people really care a lot about me. And that was a re- that was really nice. So that was the premise of my speech. Welcome to, to your 30s, Matt. I just wanted to let them know. Welcome to your 30s. I honestly see our 20s as you think you know, know what you're doing. You think you got your life sorted, doing all these things. Mm-hmm. But I reckon our 20s is honestly fuckery. Like I think it's, <laughs> you think, like literally in your brain, in your 20s, you think you've got it all sorted out. Yeah. I thought the same. But I think it's honestly just a trial period of you still figuring out who you are. And I reckon our 30s are going to be the best years ever. And then I think 40s is going to be even better. Well, I reckon we're going to get to 40 and go, Oh, 30s, 30s was, was a trial run. Yeah. And now we know what we're doing. And then you get to 50 and you go, I still don't know what I'm doing, but fuck it. Let's just enjoy but life. But 30s is life's for short. like realising like who matters, who doesn't. Like, mm. you know, all these thoughts and feelings that you're mm. having after your birthday. Like that's part of growing up and like... Maturing. Yeah. Absolutely. I know. I'm I'm in my I'm in my cutoff era. I'm in my can't be bothered. I'm in my can't be bothered era. Yes. I can't be bothered. I can't be bothered. If you I'm I'm very scratch my back. Scratch your back, I'll scratch. Uh, yeah, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yeah, yours. Yeah, That's yeah. I've always been that type of person. You do a favor for me, I'll never forget that. I'll do that favor for you whenever you need it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um yeah, unfortunately, throwing a birthday party like this really puts into perspective who will scratch your back and who won't. And so it was it was very eye-opening. But honestly, nothing could have ruined the day. No. It was absolutely perfect. It was so fabulous. I was in this gorgeous little Billy J dress and uh, everyone nailed the brief. Everyone nailed the brief. We did. Even everyone people- looked great. When you showed up, yeah. or like when we showed up and you could see everyone just stand around in their like spring vibes outfits, yeah. it was just giving like movie yeah. yeah, I'm glad because even the people I was worried about with the dress code, I was like, oh, God, what are they going to wear? They actually nailed it. So I was very, very happy with everyone because, you know, as I – I don't know if you knew, but uh, in the – uh, it, on my stories, I was saying I'd given everyone a mood board and I was like, oh, it's very stressful because I didn't want anyone to grow, show up in dark colours or black. Um, you know, we wanted nice spring florals and light colours and white and linens and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, everyone did really well. I was like, God, it's just going to throw everything else, everything off if someone rocks up in a black pants or black shirt or something. But yeah, everyone did a very good job. So I'm very happy. So there we go. I'm stoked. Thank you for listening. You can see all of the content on my Instagram, my TikTok and Instagram highlights as well. I'm sure you're all across it though. I did a house tour. I did the table decor. I did, uh, oh, what else did I do? Can't even remember. But anyway, you'll love it. So thanks for listening to this episode, Scrollers. I hope you've enjoyed uh, joining us for Close Friends. And Brittany, we will see you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday.